there. Welcome into Energy Upgrade Feng Shui Tips 2021. I'm Lisa Aubin. I am the Feng Shui practitioner and quantum energy practitioner who is going to be taking you through this cosmic energy reading and give you some Feng Shui tips to implement to help you maintain your best energetic level as you move throughout this week. So welcome again. If you're new here to my channel, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because I do these energy upgrades and feng shui tips each and every week with new fresh content. So let's get started. This is a good one. I found it really, really interesting and I hope you will too. I promise if you just stumbled upon this channel and this is the first time that you're watching, you're here for a reason, you're in the right place. So stay tuned, this message is for you. I asked the ancient book of changes, uh, the Yi Jing, to please tell me what is the energy surrounding those wishing to receive an energy upgrade in the second week of August. And it resulted in some big changes, some shifts in our hexagrams. There were two hexagrams, number nine, shifting into number 25. So if you're playing along, you can do your own research and um, deep dive into what these hexagrams are all about on your own. This is my interpretation using various sources. So in this cosmic energy, don't sign on the dotted line just yet. Again, continue with that pause that we were talking about last week, because what seems to be a small obstruction and easy to overcome is actually going to trip you up if you move forward too hastily. And what I think about is, <laughs> how many times have you tried to run up the staircase really fast and you're like feeling super sure in yourself and you misjudge the step and you fall? <laughs> Well, you know, either way, it's really embarrassing and it's like a stupid mistake to make. So that's the type of energy right now because if you can imagine, all it takes is just a nice slight wind that can prevent the clouds coming over your crops to rain. And that's, that's the story of the hexagram. Um, you know, ultimately we want our crops to be nourished so that they'll flourish and we can harvest them. But all it takes is just a little bit of a slight wind gust, um, just a sm small breeze even, that will keep the rain from, from nourishing the crops and then therefore we don't have our abundant nourishment. So never underestimate the power of small, the power of the small. And that could be small gestures, that could even be um, you know, small influences in terms of how you're handling conversations or negotiations or um, any, any interrelationship activity that you're having at this time, pay attention to the small gestures of influence. And also evaluate the journey of others that may have been or are on the same path as you and learn from their journey and even learn from their mistakes. You don't have to make the same mistakes if it's a similar journey and maybe you'll you'll find a more creative path in doing this exercise. So do a little bit of competitive research here and whether this pertains to business or relationships, ask the questions, do a little research and see if there's someone in your similar situation. You know, jump on YouTube and get down into those videos to learn about something a little deeper, read the blogs, Learn if others have been in your situation so that you can move forward knowing the best path and not having to repeat these mistakes. Make sure that you're aligned with the energy of the cosmos before you take any action. And if you're here today, you're doing just that. You're getting some alignment and um, you know, paying attention to the energy that's around you and affecting you and impacting you. But more importantly, remember that you're on your own journey. So right now, if you haven't done this already, revisit what your intentions are. What are your committed actions right now towards your goals? If you don't keep a journal um, in a gratitude journal or a, um, or a vision board or goals, make that a practice right now and write down everything that you're trying to manifest and bring into your life. And make this a daily practice and really really listen to your higher self and the right uh, the right influences, the right actions that we need to be taking or exploring 
are going to come with us, come within us in the quietest way. So it might be something that pops into your mind when you're waking up or don't the best ideas always come when you're taking a shower? <laughs> I know that seems to be for me, um, I should get one of those uh, kits that you see on Amazon where you can have a notepad in your shower because I feel like that's when things are quiet, I don't hear the kids, my phone's not ringing, and then I start to think of solutions that I hadn't thought of before. So in moments like that, make sure that you keep a notepad nearby. Um, you're going to stay very tapped into these things that you want to manifest and bring into your life and and hopefully connect the dots. So I've been working with a group of really cool women throughout this weekend learning about the Lionsgate and so sharing with one another ways and and things that we are dreaming of calling into our our spaces, our lives, our environment, and really talking about how to connect the dots there. So do your own journaling, find your own inner circles and groups, and really do your own research. It can be very cool and fun and, um, and really get to know what it is that you're trying to call into your life. Before we go any further, I just wanted to bring in a little bit of the quantum work that I'm doing for you in the session. I did uh, consult with the uh, SRC for you and it's recommending that we use the emotions panel, which I love, and the supercharger. Sorry, I keyed those up. I pulled in um, things that are within our emotional aura field and um, so some of these might resonate with you directly or someone um, that you spend a lot of time speaking with, these might resonate with them, but all of these items are within your emotional aura field some way, somehow, either through a um, TV show, conversations with a friend, or something that you're experiencing in your own life. And these um, emotions need to be harmonized um, to make sure that you're getting back to your center zero point of alignment okay so that means it doesn't mean that I'm gonna pull out all of the traumas from your life and magically you're not gonna feel any negativity or adversity um, because remember that's why we're here on earth is to experience adversity so that we can grow and so that we can overcome challenges that's why we're here we asked for this so the adversity is gonna be there but what's cool about getting into alignment and being comfortable with it is you're not going to spend too much time wobbling outside of that alignment once you get familiar with it. So what we're working with now is the ability to access peace consistent with a truly spiritual life. And beneath that are a bunch of other issues that need to be harmonized to make sure that we're in alignment. I'm going to go ahead and run this in the background while we're finishing up. And then we're going to move on to the supercharger. So the second hexagram is talking about the energy of innocence. This isn't the first time that we've gotten it, and I love it, um, because it talks about that innocence and sense of um, the childlike wonder that we have. And what this tells me is uh, let's not approach our decision making with force in the sense of like a well-planned out strategy. Um, you know, drawing out like, we're going to do this first and this this first, like a strategic attack. Do so, you know, approach your decision making with spontaneity and a childlike wonder and awe. And ask yourself the what if questions, you know, what if we did this? How about this? Like, what if we did that? Maybe get in some kind of um, brainstorming, uh, you know, some word cloud action, anything that brings you joy in your line of work. Um, whether you're a copywriter or whether you're a designer like myself, a teacher, bring more childlike wonder and spontaneity and inject it into your work and your decision-making process. And you know, in any line of work, in any profession, it's important to remember why you started and to tap into that joy and that excitement and that energy that you had when you very first started out in your serving and whatever capacity that is. And if you're a mother, if you're a father, you know, the same comes into play there. If you're a mother, father, wife, sister, brother, inject fun and childlike wonder and all into all that you do um, in terms of decision making. And, um, you know, really 
ask yourself, are you being honest and sincere and authentic? Or are you trying to manipulate um, with some strategic, <laughs> some strategic play? Play is the wrong word because I like play, but strategic, you know, um, manipulation. Everything should come from a place of um, sincerity, the sincerity of a child, the honesty of a child, the authenticity of yourself and who you are, being true with yourself and what you're projecting out into the world, right? So you're going to be able to avoid trouble if you do this. If you're going to be able to avoid trouble if you're being sincere in how you're giving advice to others um, in your personal, professional, in, in all of your relationships. Take care of your image. Consider how your energy is being received. So that's always a great exercise, whether it's a piece of marketing you're putting out or an invitation or a family newsletter or um, a workshop that you're sharing. Make sure that you're considering how your energy is being received by the audience that you're speaking with. And restrain yourself from imposing and any direct force. Um, so like imposing strong opinions from yourself. You have some empathy, um, have some consideration for who you're speaking with. And I promise you, you are on the right path and give it some careful thought and then sign on the dotted line. Um, because you're coming out of this really strong, creative time. You're like a creative force quite honestly, in this first, um, you know, maybe it has to do with the Lionsgate, but you're, you're strong with creativity and your convictions and you can't wait to tell everybody and share because you believe so much and you're so confident, but don't run so fast up those scared stairs that you miss a step and fall down and make a fool of yourself. So, okay. The other part of that is I'm supercharging you on the other side of this session. Um, that's been recommended. I love it. I like to use it in our sessions as much as possible. I use the supercharger in addition to any manual um, space clearing and charging blessing that I do with my feng shui work. This is a way to enhance what I do manually. So it's super cool. And um, let me share that with you. In relation to our session today, I'm sending you the energy and frequencies to align with abundance, innocence, wonder, awe, inspired actions, higher self downloads, and what if we, that type of brainstorming vibe. So I'm sending that to you and it's gonna support you for two weeks or more. So I'm gonna leave you today with some feng shui tips um, that you can put in place within your home or your workplace in any space you can use feng shui. And that's gonna help align you um, with the best self that you have envisioned, your mind, body, space, and spirit. Have all of that in alignment to support you. Okay, <laughs> before I get to that, the empowering words of wisdom I'm leaving you with today, speak at least three times today when you receive this message and going forward. I express my feelings and that is going to help harmonize your emotional aura field. Let this be your mantra. Write it in cursive several times. I like to use nine times. Um, I'm cloud nine feng shui for a reason. The number nine is highly auspicious. It means completion. Um, so yeah, at least three times. I express my feelings. I express my feelings. So tell me if that resonates with you. Drop me a comment. Let me know if this um, this reading and divination is resonating with your personal life right now. I bet it is. <laughs> if you found me, it's because this is for you. So no doubt, um, you know, I want to hear what you're going through, if this is helping you, what you would like to learn more about. And um, okay, so let's talk about um, the energy of children and creativity. We've talked about it several times. It falls within the five element theory that we follow in BTB, black sect, Tibetan Buddhist feng shui. All types of feng shui work with the five earthly elements. And I wanted to share with you a little bit more about the metal energy. It's one of my favorites. Um, I am uh, personally, I'm earth energy, which is harmonious with metal. So I love it. Um, earth energy creates 
metal in the creative cycle, okay? So if um, when we're creating a space and there's already a lot of metal, you know, metal can be represented in terms of circular objects, white, um, any of the metallics. I love metallics, by the way. I'm still a big fan of like gray. That falls within there as well, too. Um, this would be used on if you are using the Bagua energy map. Let's see if I have it pulled up. Um, let me go to my desktop real quick. And sometimes I have it pulled up. Minimize all this. I don't know about you, but I need to feng shui my desktop. Okay, so when we are working in feng shui using the bagua energy map and i know you've seen them all over the place um, online on pinterest on my videos even when we're working with the bagua energy map you can quite simply you know take a floor plan apply the bagua energy map to the floor plan this may or may not be simple for you if it's not reach out to a feng shui practitioner either myself i would love to work with you hear from you um, check me out in the link provided in the description and how I can help you align the Bagua energy map appropriately to your house, especially if it's an irregular shape, okay? Because irregular shapes mean that you might have extensions or missing corners. I know missing corners sounds scary, but I can help walk you through how to um, remedy or cure that situation. When you apply the Bagua energy map to a floor plan, you're gonna always align it with the main architectural front door um, when you apply it to the entire house. You can also apply the Bagua energy map to any room in any space, taking into consideration the Qi entrance. So that's usually the architecturally um, determined entrance. So in Feng Shui, we highly regard our architects because it is their intention that creates the space ultimately. Um, so there's a lot of reverence for that profession um, and other designers and so on and so forth. So you're going to take into consideration where that front entrance is. In this case, you see here demonstrated it's entering into career. Children and creativity is going to be on the right. So if you were to divide it into nine sections, it's in the middle of the right wall. Children and creativity, it's ruled by metal. You can add more earth that will create more metal without adding on additional metal. Like if that space feels too cold to you, maybe too white, too gray, too many metallics, you can add in some earth tones as well. Now earth tones that can transition into that area could be skin tones, obviously the other earth tones, brown, tan, um, you know, all the beautiful color pashminas, any of those earthy tones, it can also be um, crystals, anything from the earth, actual earth, granite, so that you can think of materials. These things are going to create metal without adding more metal and also add some depth. So um, similarly, you can also add um, water because water is harmonious with metal. Um, it can dial back, dial back the um, the the metal. So if it's too much metal and you're feeling too severe, too harsh, too too strategic. Um, you might want to add in some water to dial back a, a little bit of that energy. So, if you're finding people are saying, you know, wow, well, you know, um, you know, metal. Let's let's think of like if you're a financial planner and you're surrounded by a lot of metal, and you're feeling you're being told you're too severe in your approach, or um, you need to dial it back a notch. You would bring in some water. And um, so water you can bring in in terms of like wavy shapes if you're not a fan of black or blue or any colors of water or representations of artwork, water. So what's cool about feng shui is if you don't like one aspect of an element, we have other solutions for you. So this week I want you to align your Bagua energy map to your home, pay attention to that center right wall area, it's children and creativity. And I want you to use a mantra that um, that speaks to you and also your creativity and joy and innocence and really you know call in how can I bring um, you know and don't say how but how think to yourself how can I 
um, bring more joy and expansion into children and creativity within my life and my work or whatever your intention is built around your relationships. And um, so you could say I am, I am filled with wonder and awe in my approach to solving problems. And so keep it short, you know, something that makes sense to you, write it down, you can write it down nine times, but when you're doing your intentionally placed um, object to activate the area, uh, it could be, you know, maybe you want to bring in something of earth to create more metal, um, bring in that earth item, place it, and say um, your mantra, you're going to say it nine times while deeply visualizing the energy you're hoping to connect with and amplify within your life, that, that creativity, joy, and all, childlike innocence, and go through that process nine times. Speak your mantra, visualize, and use a uh, mudra, which is a hand symbol. I use prayer hands all the time. You'll see me do that. You don't have to use anything fancy that I've learned in in schooling for feng shui, um, but prayer hands works just the same, just to do that um, spiritual mind-body voice connection, okay? So that is what I'm leaving you with today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that this resonates with you. So the energy of this week um, is asking to consider small, um, the power of the small. It doesn't have to be big, right? So small things. Um, can be powerful. We need to be aware of them and look out for them and try to avoid tripping on the steps <laughs> because we're so excited. It's like, I have this idea. I'm so excited to tell everyone and then trip while you're running upstairs. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, you know, still have your fun, still approach your problems with creativity, wonder, joy, and what if. And, um, and then, you know, then sign on the dotted line, then make your committed um, commitment to the action you're hoping to take. I hope this resonates with you. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends and family who may enjoy these energy upgrade sessions and feng shui tips. You can learn more about me, my consultancy with Cloud9 Feng Shui, and you can learn with me and co-founder Steve Kodad of the Feng Shui Cure at the Intrinsic School of Feng Shui, where we're in our second week of learning of this last session of 2021. So check out the links um, provided in the bio, learn more about me, Cloud9 Feng Shui, and the Intrinsic School of Feng Shui, and hey, also the International Feng Shui Guild, proud member and serving on the board. So I'd love to see you all there. Many blessings times nine. <laughs>